Good morning, everybody. As you can tell, it is iced over on the front of the truck. I'm at Walmart. So last night I was uh, just freezing, you know. Uh, Danielle's working, and uh, so she stayed at the house in town. And uh, I turned the generator off. Ooh, burping. I drank some AG1 earlier. Um, I turned the generator off last night because don't need it to uh, run. Got a zero-rated sleeping bag. So I uh, woke up this morning, went out, and I had to uh, crank the generator on. And the little generator, I guess it freezes pretty quick. I don't know. I've never had that happened before but i had to pull and pull and pull and pull and pull for like 10 minutes to try to thaw it out and then finally it turned on went in the camper warming up and then it cuts off i'm like what's going on the generator's still running but the camper's not working the plug caught on fire well melted uh this whole part is coming off and uh, is melted and everything so here at walmart hopefully to get a new adapter uh, it, I guess there was ice on it that froze overnight because uh, it was 24 degrees, I think, when I woke up. And uh, it rained a little bit last night. So I think water got in here and froze. And whenever I turned it on, it started to thaw. And then all that water just... Whoosh. So uh, that kind of sucks. I have don't think I've ever had that happen before to me over the last many years of living off-grid with generators. So... I think I bought this here at Walmart, so I have to uh, go in here and see if uh, we can get one, but hopefully I can get it going. If not, I don't think anywhere around here in Bristol would have something like this. I might have to order it off Amazon. If that's the case, I'm without a generator for a couple of days, which sucks. So I'm going to figure this out real quick. If it don't work, I'm going to Amazon it, hopefully get it here tomorrow, but I doubt it since today's Sunday. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but... Whenever uh, I was in the camper and it went out, my first thought was like, great. And then I was trying to make coffee while it worked and it kept messing up and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. The uh, um, coffee maker water was frozen. I had to try to get that to fall out and uh, melt and try to get that going. And then uh, this happened. So I didn't have coffee. I uh, finally got it to work. I it had to stick this against it because this part was coming out. And then I had to get a uh, bucket of water so it's heavy and push against it to keep it from messing up so it'll last long enough. And then made coffee and uh, had the heater running for just a minute and then it cut off again and messed up. So, uh, you know, just one of them, one of them things where uh, I feel like this is going to come all the way out. I don't know. But you can push it all the way in. I don't know. Who cares? It's melted. But I started thinking, oh, man. I texted Danielle because she was going to work. And I said, this is how the day is starting. This sucks. And then I started thinking, what am I complaining about? Why? Like, I don't expect anybody to have sympathy for me. I don't expect anyone to feel sorry for me because this messed up. Or the generator took a while to crank on. Or it took me 20 minutes to try to make coffee. Whatever. I've lived a lot worse. I've lived in a tent. Uh, I had no generator running. I had no coffee maker. I lived in a tent and had to get a fire going when it was negative degrees outside just to make coffee. I don't expect sympathy from anybody. And it really got me thinking about a lot of things in life. There's so many things in life that go wrong and people want to complain about it. And people want to tell others about it and try to get the sympathy to make them feel better because for whatever reason, getting sympathy from people makes people feel better. It doesn't change the situation. It just makes people feel better. And I really started thinking about it. I was just like, I have no sympathy for anybody. No, well, almost nobody. There are things that happen if, you know, Unfortunately, like car wrecks and people die, you know, instantly or unfortunately things happen to kids and stuff like that. But in the real world, when things happen, I have no sympathy for anybody because all you're doing is making it worse. Uh, we've had sympathy for people. And when you sympathize and you, and you help, 
you're basically feeding those people the wrong attention. You're you're feeding those people the wrong thing. And this morning, with this happened, and I could have sat there and just moped and complained to myself and text Danielle, and Danielle could have been like, "It's okay, baby. It'll be okay. The day will get better. Um, I'll be out there tomorrow, and and all stuff." No, I just like, oh, that's how the day is going. And uh, Danielle was just like, well, it's just the, it's the, the world telling us, hey, we got to work on getting power. And that's the reality of it is, oh, this sucks. We have a, the generator's not working good. This is not working good. Well, there's a solution. And uh, our solution is let's work to get power. Uh, the solution when something happens and you lose your job in life, there, you don't need sympathy. You need to go look for a job. Uh, Whenever, uh, you know, maybe you don't have money, you know, enough money for something you want in life, there's no point in sympathizing for someone. Go work more. Go get a second job. Go get a third job. Go save your money. Don't spend your money on things that you don't need. Um, it, it's like, I know this is a, a bad thing to say, but it's just the reality of it. A homeless person, uh, you will sympathize, not all, but you will sympathize for the, the person begging for money. You give them money, they'll take the money and go buy beer, cigarettes, and drugs. Uh, you sympathize for them, but all you did was enable them to be worse, to be worse than what they were. When in reality, if you see someone homeless, if you can offer them a job or offer them something like that that benefits themselves more than just in a quick, quick moment, that's the way to go. This lady is looking at me getting out of the car. Like, why is this guy talking to himself so passionately in his truck alone? Danielle, is that you? There was a forerunner that just went by. It's almost identical to uh, Danielle's. And a lot of people think it's her driving around, but it's not. I may show y'all at the end of this. I don't know. I don't want to show the license plate or nothing. But the thing is, is never mind. She parked where I can't film it. Uh, if you sympathize for people too much, they'll learn to look for sympathy. They will learn to look for that handout. They will learn to look for uh, someone that is willing to help them in their weekdays, but not help them get stronger, not help them out in real life. And you see this all the freaking time. So when this happened, my first thought was, oh, this freaking sucks. When in reality... I should have thought, hey, I'm already better off than I was when I used to live in a tent. I'm already better off when I used to have to get a fire going. I'm already better off than all those times I went through. And how do I how do I fix this? Um, I just drive to Walmart and get a new piece. If they don't have it, I get it on Amazon. So am I going to sit there and complain when I can? It's an easy fix. Why am I going to sit there and complain about a generator not working when we can get power? It's going to take a while to get power to our property. It's going to take a while to uh, do all the steps in order to get the power, but it's there. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, so why am I complaining? It's the same thing in life when everyone else complains about, you know, Jason, you're so lucky. Uh, you get to live this lifestyle. You get to have this and that. So could you. Um, there's so many people out there that live a way better lifestyle than I do or Danielle, but we're not trying to sympathize saying well you're lucky you live in this big house and you don't have to live off grid you have power you have all this stuff no it's like all right we want this let's go make it work if we just got sympathy from people all day every day we would never want to do anything and on the last crocker video the intro i did the little quote thing a dream won't work unless you do and there's another freaking forerunner that's exactly like danielle's that just pulled up what in the world? There's two of them. There's literally pulled up within moments. Look at this. And look, right there, that one. And then there's one over here on this other side. You, what are the odds of that? That's crazy. Uh, two of them pulled up, same colors, almost same rims, everything. That's pretty wild. Uh, but don't. a lot of you people are enabling people to be worse, and I know this is kind of a rant, this kind of a, um, I don't know, a little different, a lot of people are like, Jason, every time Danielle's out out there, you go on these rants, well, because I have nothing but time to think, and I always relate it back to myself, because that's how I'm feeling, so, again, instead of complaining, 
just figure out a solution. I don't want sympathy because I'm cold in a camper without power. I, I, I don't want sympathy because I can't make coffee. That's such a simple solution is uh, come buy a new adapter, uh, work and get power, uh, go to Walmart and get some coffee, whatever you got to do, you know, but the, I guess the moral story is quit sympathizing for so many people because y'all are making it worse. These people literally learn how to get handouts and learn how to work the system to get people. And so if there's something in life that you want and you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. And Danielle and I want this dream bad enough. And it just got me thinking this morning, don't look for sympathy in life. Uh, too many people out there are looking for sympathy when they should be looking for solutions. And that's just the honest thing. And I think some people out there need to hear this today is quit complaining, quit acting like you can't do something for yourself, quit waiting for someone else to hand you an opportunity, go get it yourself and make things happen. Because if you just sympathize or if you're looking for sympathy, you'll get it, but it won't get you where you want to be. And that's just the honest truth. So I don't know who needs to hear it, but it really got me thinking when this thing burned up and I couldn't make coffee, I was freezing. And uh, it just seemed like, ugh, why is the world against me? The world's not against me. I put myself in this situation. So I'm going to get out there. I'm going to go inside Walmart. I'm going to try to buy a new plug. If they don't have it, I'm going to get on Amazon. I'm going to order it. We live in a world of the most amazing company ever that sends you stuff in the mail like two days later, sometimes the same day. How am I going to sit here and complain because of this? How am I going to sit there and complain on a power when I used to live in a tent and have to build a fire in the morning just to make coffee and stay warm? Life could be a lot worse. Get off your butt. Go get your dream. Go do what you got to do. Quit looking for sympathy. Look for a freaking solution, people. And that's my Sunday sermon. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. All right, guys. I'm going to go in Walmart. And uh, go get what I need, get back to the property, get some uh, work done. Guys, don't look for sympathy. Look for a freaking solution.